So you're learning about rational functions, and the more you study them, the weirder they get. I'm looking at you, oblique asymptotes. But then, something even stranger happens. You're playing around with your graphing calculator and this random rational function, and you get confused because your graphing calculator tells you that this function is a line. You're upset because all the awesome JSTRUST math videos you just watched told you that this function should have an oblique asymptote because the degree in the numerator is one higher than the degree in the denominator. See, I did say that. And it gets worse because as you're dragging this point across your line, you hear this noise. And your graphing calculator is telling you that the y value is not a number. You instantly head to YouTube to see if there are any good videos that could help you understand what is going on with math. Enter J. Strauss Math, the only YouTube channel run by a math teacher that does stuff like this. And can also explain what's going on with your broken function. What you're seeing is the result of a hole in your function, the more technical term being a removable discontinuity. Holes are removable because they result from situations where you can factor either the numerator or the denominator of your rational function and cancel something out. If the thing you're canceling has a restriction on x, you get a hole. Sounds confusing, right? Let's look at an example. Consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. If you're up to date on rational functions, you might say that this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 and an oblique asymptote due to the higher power on x in the numerator than the denominator. However, this function is tricky. If you factor the numerator using the difference of squares factoring method, you'll see that this factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. We now have x plus 2 on the top and the bottom, and we know that anything over itself is just equal to 1, so I can effectively cancel out those two expressions. So this simplifies into, you guessed it, a line. I like to think of these types of functions as wearing those weird mustache glasses disguises. You've got a complex function that really simplifies into a line. It's really like this line is just wearing one of these creepy disguises. You're not fooling anyone, x minus 2, I'm on to you. So what we have here is a rational function that simplifies into x minus 2 on the condition that x does not equal negative 2. But if I was curious about the location of this hole, I could sub in x equals minus 2 and get out negative 4 if I substitute x equals minus 2 into this line. So this tells me that the coordinates of my hole are at negative 2, negative 4. That should explain what I'm seeing on my graphing calculator. At negative 2, negative 4, I have an undefined value. That explains why my graphing calculator is telling me I have not a number. Note that the normal line y equals x minus 2 does not have a hole at negative 2. Only if I simplified a rational function into that line can I say that there is a hole. There are, of course, more complex versions of this that require more difficult factoring, such as this one. But in the interest of keeping this video short and accessible, I won't go over this one in this video. If you're just dying to see this one explained, leave a comment for me and I will totally record it. With such enthusiasm too, because that means that someone is actually watching this video. If this video helped you in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And just, well, chaos in general, really. No, seriously, there's a video of me playing with fire on here. As usual, thanks for watching.